Hey guys, doing there? This is Mitch coming right back at you. Mitch from Mitch's City Walks of the Occasional Cruise. Last month, I just finished up with my first MSC Seascape Cruise. Bahamas, Puerto Rico, and Dominican Republic. You'll see some of my other videos I had a great time on there. But there was a problem that I hit up on while I was riding my on the ship. And I am an inquisitive person. So what that means is I'm a kind of a nerdy person, right? I'm always trying to figure out things, why they are, why is this, why is that, correct? So my, uh, my graduate degree is in economics, and so my BA is in city planning, which makes me a nerd. How do I know this? On that one, two, three of me, that awesome genealogy type program, 85% of me I found out was black. I didn't know that. That was amazing, right? But the other 15% was certified nerd, so I found that out. This is why I'm always inquisitive about these kinds of questions, right? So for me, it was things like the water and where waste goes and, and things like that. So I had to find out these awesome questions in my mind. And I want to give it to you because maybe you're curious also. First thing I had was, do these ships hold fresh water? And I figured, well, of course they do, right? But how much fresh water do they hold? These ships, on average, these cruise ships can hold 500,000 gallons of fresh water on board. That, to me, was just, like, amazing. I had no idea. 500,000 gallons of fresh water. That's, like, wow, right? And so then I thought about this. I said, okay, that's not going to last very long for, you know, five or 6,000 people times eight or nine or ten days. So how do they make the water fresh? How do they get more water, right? Well, ships have what they call desalination processes on board. So what does that mean? It means that they have mechanisms that go into the water, the salt water, and they desalinate. They take the salt out of the water. And of course, they also apply minerals into the water. And that's how they distribute the water back to people who use, who use it on the ship. That's how that works. So they all have these little desalination processors on the ship so it's kind of cool right so then i had to wonder hmm okay here's a big question right where does our waste go right it's like oh man that's a good question right because we're supposed to be green now and in recycling and not you know being so wasteful and things of that nature well that's processed too it's processed a few times on the ship in the processors there for your waste Waste, I mean your excrement, <laughs> correct? And then that too eventually, sorry guys, that also goes into the ocean. That's what I found out, sadly, but that's the truth. About on my second day, I started noticing these guys, right? They're walking around in these open jackets with, with, uh, with ties, you know? And I was thinking, well, I know they're part of the ship. It has their name on it. It doesn't say what country they come from because most staff on the MSC Seascape cruises, the staff have their name and where they come from. But these guys did not, at least the ones I saw. So I told my wife, I bet those guys are security, some kind of security, you know. They can't be cops walking around with badges and guns, you know. But I said to her, I bet they're security. And sure enough, I did ask one guy. He said, yeah, he's a security guy, you know. So then I said, well, do you guys have gels on this ship? He said, hey, you want to find out? No, that's not what he said. He said, he, he said, yes, we do have a couple gels on the ship. He said, 99% of people would never see a gel. But yes, cruise ships do have gels on their ships for those unruly people who just cannot be normal in normal society, right? Because you got to figure, these cruise ships are like a small city. In every small city, you have one or two or three clowns who don't know how to act right in a civilized society, even on cruise ships. You see them on airplanes all the time, too. So cruise ships do have gels. So then I wondered, right, we're eating at the restaurant every night, the Green Wave restaurant on the Seascape. And we eat at the buffet, too, but we're not eating, al eating alone. There's a lot of people there eating with us. So I had to inquire, right, what does the average cruise ship that has about 6,000 passengers on board what do these guys go through every week for food? I was very curious, right? Because I'm a curious kind of guy. I already told you, I have some nerd in me. So there we go. Uh, at this point here, I want to ask you to please subscribe and like to this channel. I would really appreciate it. So let's go through this thing for a week for a 6,000 uh, passenger cruise ship on average, what they go through. So in one week, 60,000 eggs, 700. 
100 pounds of ice cream. Now, about 500 pounds is for me alone. So the other 200 is for you guys, okay? 2,000 pounds of lobster tails. This is a week. 2,000 pounds of lobster tails. 2,500 pounds of salmon. Oh my gosh. 12,000 pounds of flour tortillas. 2,000 pounds of wings. Now, this is not really, that was not so accurate because 1,500 of the wings are mine. The other 500 are what you guys ate. So it's a little skewed, right? But <laughs> 2,000 pounds of wings is a lot, right? And here we go back to the water, okay? This is for a week, okay? So in a week, 479 gallons of fresh water are consumed every day on the ship. So remember back when I told you 500,000 gallons the ship can hold? Well, in one week, that's gone already, right? So very interesting how much things are consumed on a ship. It's, it's just incredible. And of course, I thought about what happens if you want to leave the ship early? What happens? Can you just get off and leave? Can you just go ahead and go without any kind of penalties? Now, this was the average answer. I looked up three different companies and this was the answer I found mostly is that, yeah, you can leave early if you want to, but there is a fine attached to that. Okay, so you will pay something if you want to leave that ship early. Now, emergencies are a different deal. If you have a true valid health issue, well, we can't control that, can we? But if you just say, eh, I want to go somewhere else or not on this ship, whatever, well, there's a cost for that, okay? So just be aware, if you don't like your ship, for whatever frivolous reason, you will pay some heavy, real American coin to get off that ship to make it valid for you. So just be aware of that before you do that, okay? Before you disembark, before you should disembark. So remember, I talked about the sewage, the, the, the waste, right? Dumping the waste. Well, here's a caveat to that rule. Yes, once a ship is three miles off the, the, the waters of America, Except for Alaska, you can dump sewage into the ocean. I know it's bad, guys, but that's the real deal. So they can do that, and they do do that, you know. So that's the issue with waste and sewage. As long as you're, as you're three miles off the off the coast, except for Alaska, you can the ship can dump your waste into the ocean there. Who has some shortness of breath, and they came and brought them down to the doctor, or whatever. So first. Yes, ships have a doctor, uh, but my question really was, because remember, I'm a very curious type person, would my insurance work on this ship? Say I'm somewhere out in the middle of the ocean, right? Or out of the country, right? So would my insurance work? Well, for my own insurance, yes, it does work because there's a, there's a clause there where we brought along uh, medical cards for that'll work anywhere in the world. That's what we did. But so will insurance work? You gotta make sure you check with your provider, with your with your insurance company, Will they cover you if you're not in America and something happens? So you want to make sure you check that out because not every country takes, you know, whatever you have, right? So uh, you might find yourself having to pay out of pocket if you don't cover your bases before you leave the ship, uh, before you go on, on your vacation, okay? So double check. So worker wages. I was on the cruise ship, always amazed by how hard the staff worked and uh, had some good conversations with some of the staff. You know, of course, I don't ask them about they're paid, but when I got back though, I wanted to see how much do these guys make on average. So you take the average person from California. Now remember now, most staff I've met, if not almost all of them came from everywhere except for California. I mean other countries, right? So if we take an average person, uh, cruise member from California, uh, it's 1843 an hour. That's what they make via the, 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 the California wage on the ship is 1843 an hour. That's about 40% above the national, national range there. So, um, that's what that was for here, uh, for, for California staff on these ships, 1843 an hour. Then I wanted to wonder, right? Okay. So, you know, we have the automatic gratuity. So what that is, is that in your bill, in, in, in your package, there's a built in for most lines, there's a built in tip, right? It's a built in gratuity package in your package, right? So for myself and my wife, it was like 200 bucks already built into the total bill. And so I wanted to figure out what is that average when that's split amongst all the people, right? So our ship held about 5,000 passengers. So 5,000 passengers say times 200 bucks per, per couple, you know, whatever, right? 100 bucks per person, 200 bucks a couple. 
And then what's that average to all the staff on that ship? Because there's over 3,500 staff, people who work around that ship to keep it going, to do what it's doing, right? And so it averaged to be about 19 bucks a day in tips. And so, um, you know, for my first video, I like to take care of staff who, who treat, treat me right, I treat them right, you know? So, um, so 19 bucks a day in tips is what they average out, is what they get for their, for their built in gratuity. And so I'm so glad I also gave them tips on my own too. So, um, there we go. So they get about 19 bucks a day in tips. Now, depending on the country too, like, like some countries, you know, if it's like against the peso, against the Ukraine, there's the grivna, you know, whatever that's against is they use a USD dollar, uh, to, to go against their, their coin to make it maybe more money, you know, of course, right? So that's how that works. Though, okay. And I was, then I wondered about the Wi-Fi connection. Now, you guys probably know when I go into my, when I went into my cruise, I did not get the Wi-Fi on purpose. I wanted to disappear, be gone and relax and just escape with my wife, right? But Wi-Fi packages and Wi-Fi seems kind of spotty. So my question was, how do you make sure you have a good Wi-Fi package? Maybe you're a VIP. I'm not, I'm not a VIP, but maybe you are. Or maybe you want to talk to your lover, your mom and dad, whoever every day, right? Maybe you have a great social media site, right? So how do you make sure you have a good Wi-Fi package? You have to depend on the reviews for each cruise ship you're on and for each uh, company you go to because the reviews really tell you a lot because those are actual people using the Wi-Fi system, okay? Every cruise line is gonna brag about how great their Wi-Fi is, right? But the way I found this answer was, how do I find out the best? I went to the reviews for each of those ships and each of those companies, and that's how I did it, you know? And that's the best way to do it, that's what I'm telling you. If you wanna have good Wi-Fi on your cruise, make sure you read the reviews and make sure they're positive before you hop on that ship if you wanna stay in contact with people, okay? Because sometimes, some, some of you guys who run these social media sites, whatever, it might take you six, seven, eight hours just to download one video if you have a bad Wi-Fi package. So be careful out there.